So what we are going to cover actually is a SAFE, which is stands for Scaled Agile Framework. It's really a two days course, which I'm going to cover in 12 minutes actually, right? So be with me. Uh, really thanks to Jim actually, who has kind of laid over the foundation in terms of what, how you can scale agile within your environment, right? So you probably saw this, which is kind of like, comes from manifesto, comes from the framework. You, know, you probably would have seen this if you practice agile at your workplace. So how many of us really practice agile at work? Beautiful. And how many of us struggle actually to take that agile from the team layer to the program layer and to the portfolio layer? And rest of us, do we follow any framework? Or we learn as we go along, right? That's most of the time, that's what we do actually, right? Uh, I'm not gonna get into this because Jim has already covered it, but kind of the concept, this is kind of like the team level concept. And the team level concept also goes for the program level concept and the portfolio layer concept, right? So the concepts always, the principles always stays the same. I'm sure Jim covered about the roles, activities, and artifacts. How many of us have heard about SAFE here? It's gone, okay. The SPC exam? Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. How many of us have heard about SAFE here? Do we, have you incorporated SAFE at work? Or are we in the process of incorporating it? Go for it, actually, right? We have incorporated, so uh, I work for PWC, uh, and that's my job, actually, right? Go to the organization, do the transformation, and incorporate, implement SAFE, right? So just did actually a whole program increment session at Liberty yesterday with 120 people. And it's exciting actually, right? I don't have much time, uh, else I would have shown you some pictures I took actually just to show all of us that it's amazing what SAFE can do. It's exciting, right? Uh, as far as the core values are concerned, it's basically built-in quality. So whatever we produce at the team layer to the program layer to the portfolio layer, it's always inbuilt quality, right? That's like the first thing. We, are, we not only speak about the triple constraints where we speak about the scope, time, and cost, but we really focus on quality as well, right? As a project manager, we always have those three balls in our hand, right? Always speak about the program execution, right? So as, as the scale is concerned, it's about team, but it's more about the program layer, right? Because the team will automatically work as the program works. And then the third is the alignment. You can see, right, any organizations, we don't have one team. We have multiple teams, multiple teams interacting with each other on a daily basis or dependent on each other on a daily basis, right? So it's not like a silo system whereby what I produce and the consumer or the client or the customer just directly consume it. It's primarily a bunch of teams who work together and produce a common product, right? So these are dependencies which executes. And therefore, it's very, very important that they all align in what they produce and deliver at the marketplace. Please. Quick question. I think you mentioned it was from PWC, so I'm assuming this is where they're developing software development business. Are you seeing safe being used uh, outside of software-related deliverables for companies? I have done, so the uh, really good question actually is safe can be incorporated outside the software. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, yes. And once I show you the framework, you can see that it, it's up, it can be applicable to anything and everything, right? That's how Dean has put together. Okay. And then the transparency, and you got to have the transparency because what you are building, not only your own team needs to know, at the same time, other teams needs to know, right? Then only they are going to call out their dependencies, right? Any questions here so far? It all makes sense? Not to overwhelm you, therefore I said it normally takes two days actually to teach the whole course, right? <laughs> but we, are, we have been agile here. Uh, but the concept is, right, in terms of you define a work or a scope of work actually for two weeks or three weeks or four weeks sprint, right? Probably Jim covered the whole sprint concept. Then you define actually another two weeks of concept, uh, sprint scope of work for you. But it's not that it's just you who is going to produce a result out of it. It's multiple teams who are going to produce the results out of it, one, right? And that's where actually most of the organizations struggle. And many times people say, I don't think Agile really works. It's just how we incorporate, right? How we implement Agile in an enterprise level, that's what it's important, right? So what Jim has covered is 
at the team layer, right? So as you can see, there are four layers here. There's a team layer, there's a program layer, there's a value stream layer, and the portfolio layer. What Jim covered was at the team layer, whereby you have a scope of work, you have team size between five plus and minus two, right? So between seven or three, and you take a bunch of stories, a bunch of use cases, a bunch of scope of work or features or functionalities, and develop as a team within two, three, or four weeks, whatever that duration is, right? You try to have a backlog, which is basically your list of all things you're going to produce within that time frame. Over a period of time, I'm sorry. You take that as a sprint backlog. You start working on them. You produce results. You have the demo. And then you move on to the next sprint, right? But when you have the multiple teams working, you want to make sure that everyone knows what they're doing, not for two weeks, but over a longer period of time. So any organizations you go, actually, the first thing they will ask is, hey, do we have a vision? Do we have a roadmap? Right? And many times what happens is there's a disconnect between the vision and the roadmap and the actual team. Right? And people don't even know what the KPIs are and what they're producing for the overall program or the portfolio layer. Right? And that's what SAFE does is that it connects all those pieces together so then you can start seeing the results. So what SAFE does is, rather than defining your scope of work just for two weeks, just for a small team, they start deciding it actually at the program layer. Whereby they take, so for example, if you're implementing SAP, and you may have many multiple teams, right? Or you're implementing a system like a Salesforce, which probably will go across the organization, right? So rather than defining just for your own domain, like sales or billing or finance, you're defining for the overall work stream, right? And what you do is you take the backlog you have for the overall team. You get all these people actually in a room. So yesterday we had around 124 people who flew across the globe to do the whole planning session, right? And you define your backlog for five sprints, right? So you're speaking about around two and a half months of work. And you're defining it with everyone in the room who's going to produce that overall product or objective or goal. Beautiful, right? And it's amazing actually what happens. The excitement in this overall place is just amazing because I know exactly what the organization at the enterprise level is thinking as far as the strategy themes are concerned, right? And then it comes down actually, and then I have someone actually who speaks about what we have to produce in the quarter one. And I take those quarter one, let's say top 10 features, I take each of those features and make them into stories in two days planning session. And then I have five sprints or 10 weeks or 15 weeks, however your sprint you define, and you build that actually, right? So as far as the ceremonies are concerned, to so the concept, right? We are good with the concept, right? Rather than doing just for Two sprints, one sprint, we are defining it for five sprints. That means we are thinking about a quarter of work, actually, right? So whenever the organization defines actually strategic teams, they define for the whole year. They get into a detail of the first quarter, which is primarily three months of work, and that's what we cover, actually. We get into details to deliver it. So there's a more of productivity is there, more of achieving is there, that yes, I'm going to achieve what I'm putting this together, right? So here, as you can see, the ceremonies are more or less same as far as the team layer is concerned. And at the program layer also, are, the ceremonies are more or less same, whereby every program increment, which is basically your three months or 15 weeks or 10 weeks of your sprint, you all come together as a overall integrated piece and you do a system demo out of it. As far as the roles are concerned, in the team layer, you have a product owner, you have a scrum master, and you have the agile team, right? Primarily three main roles. And most of the organizations have started understanding that you also need a coach to help the scrum master, right? At the program layer, you have what is called the product management, system architect and engineer. And the new concept comes as a RTE, which is a release, train, engineer, right? So what it is is that when you take a work, 
which is primarily you have, so let's say, seven modules. You define that as work as called as a release train, and you start calling it as a agile release train. So many times you will also hear people say art, which is agile release train. Right? So you're taking a bunch of work with different teams, putting them together, and says, let's do it together as an overall program level team. You have a business owner who makes sure that we are delivering based on the objectives we have set for that program increment. I'll pause for a second. Any questions? Is this making sense? Right? Because at the team level, we always speak about grooming the backlog for two sprints. Right? Here we are saying, let's groom the backlog for five sprints, actually. And not only do it alone, but let's get in a room with all the people, actually, right? 100, 120 people. And let's groom it together for five to six sprints, actually. Yeah, I think it's important to note is there's actually videos that you can go out and see how these large 100 plus teams Absolutely. Are kind of facilitated. I think seeing it is really, but once you see it kind of in action, then it becomes a little bit more. Absolutely. Useful. Exactly. Exactly. What we'll do is uh, when we send all the slides, I'll put a link to that. Do you know the links? I have the links. I can give you the live links too. I took some live links yesterday when I was doing the whole thing <laughs> to show all of us that this is amazing. Like the energy is amazing. And safe really works. Agile really works actually. Right? It takes definitely patience. You have to do it at least for two or three PI program increments, and then things start getting. I still remember three months back when we did it for the first time, everyone was lost. Everyone was trying to seal because we took 80 people and said, you know what, now we're going to do top 10 features and we're going to break stories and we are going to see how we can do the dependencies, and now we are going to produce actually next day, right? We go to the sprint 1.1. But this time when we did sprint uh, program increment two, next level, right? Everyone exactly knows what's happening actually, right? So the energy is amazing. So that's the program layer. And what it happens is that the portfolio layer, so at the enterprise you have strategic teams, you have the portfolio managers, they define what works they have to do. Right, which is big chunkable pieces actually, right? You're talking about implementing SAP in an organization. And that becomes a value stream because the organization derives a value out of it. Make sense? At the portfolio layer. And then you break that up actually, those apics into features and then into stories. So the concept a little bit changes here. In in Agile, we call apics, stories, task, and subtask. In SAFE, it's called Apex, Features, Stories, Task, and Subtask. And just in SPC4, uh, sorry, the uh, SAFE 4, which just came out, they also included one more layer, actually, which is called Value Stream. Because it's all about value, right? When we speak about stories, the first thing we speak about is value, right? We ask the product owner, what is the value here, right? Why am I even doing this stuff? Why am I building this feature? What's the value? What's the ROI? And therefore, that SAFE realizes that they should have a value stream whereby organization is thinking about delivering value, right? So it's not on piece of paper where I'm saying value, 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 but there's a whole layer. And when Apex, they think about delivering capabilities or delivering solutions, actually, right? Delivering within SAP, if you're delivering a, a billing module or a finance module or a sales module, you're delivering value out of it. And that's what you... That's the capability you're talking about here. The roles are more or less kind of same, overlapping, actually. You have a value stream engineer. You have the solution architect and engineer, right, at this layer. And then you have the solutions management. And as you move up, actually, you have the portfolio program manager and you have the enterprise architect. Right? As we all work for Fortune 500 or the big organizations, the kind of role makes sense because at the enterprise level, you need people, actually, or the architect at the enterprise level then at the system level, and then at the team layer, right? And the architectures are not built in a day. They are basically doing it on an architecture runway, right? So which is kind of here. Which is they're building what they think should be good enough for one program increment, and as they grow, they scale the architecture as well. My time is up, actually. Sorry. So... It's amazing, actually, what SAFE can do. I've been implementing SAFE, actually, from last few months in different organizations, and it's amazing what SAFE can bring value to the organization. Right? And I'm sure uh, we're thinking of offering a SAFE Agilist course here. Yes. 
uh, at BU. It will be a two days course, non-credit, uh, non -credit. Uh, but you'll get a certification right from SAFE on by as a SAFE Agilist, as a SAFE practitioner, and which holds a lot of value. Because you can go out in your organization and implement the whole framework. So what I've done in 10 minutes probably, it will take two days at least to consume the different concepts, and then implement probably takes one program increment to two program increment, and then you become a champion actually within your organization. Cool, thank you everyone, really appreciate it. Thank you.